On November 5, 2021, ARC Cheek Executive Officer and Chief Information Officer Kathy Wood talked about what's going to happen to China and its economy. As Kathy Wood said, We're looking at China today much like uh, we were looking at Japan in 1989. And as it turns out, uh, we were about to experience a bit of a bust. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happened here because of China. Kathy Wood's prediction is alarming. She believes China's economy is on the verge of the greatest crash in history, which will take decades to recover from. Several indicators suggest that China's economy has already fallen, similar to Japan's dramatic 80% stock market meltdown in the 1990s, which is still far from recovery three decades later. Now, what does this all mean? Welcome to Empire Investing, the channel where we'll be sharing the latest in stock market news, technology, and innovative investment strategies for aspiring millionaires and billionaires. If this is your first time watching our channel, please consider subscribing to see more videos like this. And let's get started. In this video, we'll discuss why Kathy believes China is about to experience the largest crash in history. The constant growth in Chinese house prices shows that China's housing market has inflated greatly over the previous decade, and most investors are unaware that the Chinese real estate bubble is going to collapse. Before we get into the science, consider the stunning parallels between China and 2021 that occurred in Japan in the 1990s. Over the previous two decades, China's real estate developers have leveraged up to aggressively build their real estate holdings. This looks to be a good thing on the surface, but it also signals that the market will be exceedingly volatile in the future. We've seen this with Evergrande, the world's most indebted real estate developer, and it's a worrying trend that other Chinese real estate firms are adopting. At least four additional large Chinese developers have requested repayment extensions from investors. Among the corporations engaged are Fantasia Holdings, Modern Land, China Properties, and Xinyuan Real Estate, all of which are unable to repay debts in the hundreds of millions of dollars. During the Chinese bull run, real estate developers borrowed more than $5 trillion, according to economists and Moral Holdings. A market at meltdown is nearly inescapable when there is so much leverage in the market. Now let's talk about Japan's economic crash, which was dubbed as the Lost Decade. From 1990 to 2003, Japan's Nikkei index fell by more than 80% from its all-time highs. This disaster is dubbed the Lost Decade because investors at the peak would still be roughly down 25% after more than 30 years. Comparing the two, we could potentially see a similar or probably a worst case happening to China's economy right now. This could mean that this financial collapse will not only affect Chinese citizens, but the entire global economy as well. Kathy later on talked about what happened back in Japan. She further states that We're looking at China today much like uh, we were looking at Japan in 1989. We saw what happened to Japan 30 years ago. During its time, a lot of people thought that Japan would even become the largest economy in the world, calling it the bubble economy. In the 1980s, the Imperial Palace in Tokyo was worth more than all of California, costing approximately $139,000 per square foot. And on December 29, 1989, the Nikkei 225 stock market reached their all-time high of almost 39000 a few years later, their economy stagnated and has yet to recover. With Japan's devastating history, she continued. So in 1989, uh, Japan was at the peak of its real estate boom. Uh, the Nikkei had hit 40,000 or was close to it. And uh, we thought, we, the world largely thought, wow, there's no stopping Japan. Um, and Japan's going to become the largest economy in the world. And of course, that didn't happen. Real estate represents 70 to 80 percent of China's household wealth, according to Moody's Investor Service. If the real estate market in Japan hits 80 percent, the entire global economy would come to a standstill. Almost every country relies on China to manufacture practically all items. A severe drop in the Chinese economy as a result of the real estate disaster would reduce global expenditure. 
a tragedy that might intensify in 2022. Goldman Sachs, a financial services firm, revealed that approximately $6 billion in real estate development debt comes due in January of 2022. This is a big rise above November's developer debt payments of less than $2 billion. Several Chinese real estate development enterprises have previously gone bankrupt. This would mean that in the next few months, we would see a dramatic increase of repayments. Right now, the Chinese Communist Party is doing its best effort to crack down on illegal real estate transactions, instituting strict regulations on real estate companies. This may seem like the logical move to promote equality amongst its citizens, but Kathy Wood thinks otherwise. China's real estate is important for the economic growth of the country. Kathy explained that an estimated 75% of all consumer savings in China is in real estate. As the price of real estate falls because of the CCP's regulations, the consumers are worried. The CCP is taking a risk with their most valuable asset, which is why Kathy said that, I think China's playing with fire uh, on this particular topic, uh, especially because they are also targeting the financial regulators who oversaw financial institutions who were lending to the real estate sector and they the, the national government is also investigating certain financial firms another reason why this crash is globally impactful is the china commodity market as of right now commodity demand in china accounts for 15 percent of total global gdp and the most concerning out of these commodities are iron and copper because it's currently collapsing at an alarming rate since May of 2021. Typically, it is beneficial for businesses worldwide when commodity prices decline. This would mean that materials are bought at a cheaper price. By lowering the cost of goods sold, the profits are higher. But for China, the dramatic decline of these prices indicates the slow growth of their economy. This is what Kathy Wood has been wondering why no one is paying attention to. She's surprised to see that. The headlines are not blaring this, this topic, China versus commodities. And it's because I think we're not paying attention to it because there are so many other dramatic things going on out there on the side of inflation. And that has captured much more headline uh, space than, than what's going on in China. At this point, everyone should be on their toes because the effect of the real estate crash is going to be global, especially in the United States. In the semi-annual financial stability report that the Federal Reserve recently released, they pointed out the widespread concern about China's real estate bubble bursting. In their reports, they talked about how China's real estate sector could strain the Chinese financial system with possible spillovers to the United States. In China, business and local government debt remain large. The financial sector's leverage is high, especially at small and medium-sized banks, and real estate valuations are stretched. This report confirms Kathy's statement that the regulation of real estate development firms is a huge risk. The ongoing regulatory focus on leveraged institutions has the potential to stress some highly indebted corporations, especially in the real estate sector as exemplified by the recent concerns around China Evergrande Group. The dream of equality amongst the Chinese citizens may cause more problems than solutions. With the Chinese property market having $5 trillion in new debt, this regulation might be the cause for China's realistic crash on the United States. In addition, the Fed stated, Given the size of China's economy and financial system as well as extensive trade linkages with the rest of the world, financial stresses in China could strain global financial markets through a deterioration of risk sentiment, pose risks to global economic growth, and affect the United States. The Fed also included a percentage-based list of what 26 market experts foresee would happen in the future to the U.S. economy if China's situation becomes worse. According to this graph, nearly half of market experts see China's regulatory property risks as a potential threat in the future. Below that are tensions between the United States and China, which are viewed as a concern by roughly 30% of market experts. And as if things couldn't get to any worse, approximately 15% of market experts see China's potential slowdown 
as a serious threat to the US. These market experts, as presented by the Fed's report, really believe that China's collapse will definitely be disastrous for the US economy. But not only the US, Kathy believes that this crash could severely hit Europe, a larger trading partner with China, more than the United States, which confirms how the economic crash will potentially affect the global economy. With Kathy's analysis and Fed's report, what will be the investor's backup plan? To prepare for the possible Chinese economic crash, the best thing to do is to avoid exposure with China, which includes American businesses that rely on China. If we look at ARK's Invest's top combined holdings, we can see that most, if not all, the companies are not reliant on China except for Tesla. Tesla has significant exposure to China, but it's not a major issue. According to Elon Musk, the demand for Tesla vehicles is excessively high and he isn't worried about its collapse. So there you have it. What are your thoughts on Kathy Wood's prediction? Join the discussion in the comments below. If you like the video, please click the like and subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video.